Hi, my name is Alex Sitzman and I am Magnetospeed's electrical engineer. I have our V3 display unit here and I would like to go through the general operation of it as well as explain the menu options. Subsequent videos will go into more detail on specific functions. Like the V1, V2 display, this device powers on when you plug it in. This model continuously checks the BAO connection rather than just on the startup. When it detects that the BAO is plugged in, it turns the input capture circuitry accordingly. Now we see the home screen. The screen is split into two sides. The shot velocities accumulate in the scrollable left side, while the statistics stay put on the right. I am now going to simulate a set of realistic shot velocities to show you what to expect while shooting. The backlight toggles while the display is processing the shots. Now we can use the arrow buttons to see each shot velocity on the left side. Up to 99 shots can be stored on a string. We've added a tenth place for the standard deviation for standard deviations less than 100. Now let's look at the menu. To get into the menu, press the round enter button. Go back takes you back to the home screen. Archive series takes the data shown on the display and writes it to a comma separated variable CSV file. This is a simple format that is very common in scientific computing. It can be opened with virtually any spreadsheet program or even text editors. Once it is on your computer, you can add additional data if you'd like. Now notice that we are on the second string. The data from the first string is now stored on the SD card where it can be viewed but no longer able to be edited with this device. When set up correctly, the magnetospeed chronographs are extremely reliable. So most of the time you simply watch the data accumulate and archive to the SD card when you're done with your group. I'm going to simulate another set of velocities to continue to demonstrate the menu options. Now let's say I want to delete this third shot. First, I go to the menu by pushing the enter button then I scroll down to delete a shot and push enter again. Now I scroll down to the shot in question and select it. Hit confirm and it's gone. The statistics are updated automatically. Back to the main menu. The next option is set sensitivity. This option will be explained in detail in a later video. Moving on we see reset series to one. This option basically resets the shot data by clearing all shots and resetting the series counter back to one. The next option clears all the shots on the current string, but does not reset the series counter. Both of these options have confirmation screens to prevent accidental deletions. View archive data lets you look at the data that has been archived to the SD card. The next option deals with battery settings and has a submenu. We can view the current battery state as well as choose the type of battery that is being used. If I look at the battery state in 9 volt mode, we see the raw battery voltage as well as a graphic indicator of the state of charge. I'm going to save the data checker in operating modes for a later video. The next options let the user choose the units that are displayed feet per second or meters per second, and what statistic is displayed, either standard deviation or extreme spread. There is a special submenu for memory card functions. These options are not needed for standard operation, but are useful in some situations. The first allows you to test cards before you get to the shooting range. The V3 works with a greater range of cards than the previous model, including FAT32 formatted cards, but it's always a good idea to test out any new card. The second option allows you to clear the data log file. Normally, you would use a computer to simply rename the log file by adding something like the date. The next time data is archived, a fresh log file is created and the data is added. Now you can use this option to clear the log file from the device itself if you do not have access to a computer. The last option lets the user format the SD card. Consult the manual for more information about formatting. Set backlight mode switches between the backlight being on or off by default. Finally, reset system 
sets the device back to its default state. Now you should have a good idea of the menu options. There is one more screen that is not on the menu, but I would like to highlight because I find it very useful. After a shot, press and hold the down arrow, then press the up arrow. A quick overview screen pops up and gives you a snapshot of the state of the device. Pushing any button takes you to a shot summary screen. This screen gives you an idea of if your sensitivity is set right and if the bayo is level. More experienced users can push the up arrow to get the peak values measured by the sensors. Okay, that's it for now. Look for more videos from Magneto Speed soon.